Hey guys, I'm back for another video. It's been literally almost a month um, since I've uploaded in anything. Um, it's been honestly the craziest month um, that I've had to go through. Um, I had surgery. Um, uh, yes, I didn't know through the whole benzo withdrawal that my gallbladder was bad. And I knew my gallbladder was bad because I actually had an attack on August 8th after I ate, a, you know, a huge meal. Um, and I didn't have gallstones or anything like that, but I did overeat that day. I just ate way too much, more than I normally ever eat. And I had this horrific, like, pressure from in my stomach all the way up into my diaphragm, and it just literally felt like I couldn't breathe. Um, the most horrific thing ever. And then I was getting this weird, acidy like bile taste in my mouth after I was eating um, late at night. Um, so I had found out that my gallbladder was overactive. So that wasn't good. I decided um, after 30 days of suffering from horrible, horrible acid reflux and just my eyes burning and my vision blurry um, and being just feeling like I've been poisoned to go ahead and have my gallbladder removed. So on 9-5, I had gallbladder surgery and it was pretty horrific, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've been put to sleep two other times for other operations on my stomach and I feel like being under the benzo um, as far as you know being on it and coming off of it had a lot to do with my recovery as far as just the reaction I had to anesthesia. Um, so I just felt like when I came out of anesthesia, like I was unable to breathe. And to be honest, I, I will take that back. I don't know how much of the not being able to breathe was the procedure, um, because my throat was really sore from where they had the, um, I guess they call it like an incubator tube that they put in your mouth while you're asleep. Um, my throat was really sore. I had a little sore on the side of my inner mouth on the left, um, and also the incision, which I'm not going to show you right now, but the incision is right here, like right underneath where, you know, my bra strap would be. Um, and that incision, I was told by my doctor that that's done right over the diaphragm. So that would make sense when you come out of surgery, why you would feel like you couldn't breathe. So I honestly don't know how much it was the anesthesia versus the, the where the incision was made. Um, so that was kind of scary, but it's been almost three weeks as of Thursday, uh, tomorrow. So I'm feeling a little more like myself, um, which is really good. Also today, um, <clears throat> I'd show you on my phone, but I'm obviously recording with my phone and I'm getting over a horrible sinus infection, but today marks 90 days that I am benzo free. So I don't know if I wanna smile or cry or still be angry. I, I still am feeling a lot of, I'm gaining emotion back, but I'm also feeling like some of my emotions are not in the present long enough where I can actually act on them and feel human again. So I'm hoping that that comes back. Um, so I've had the surgery. I'm still, you know, dealing with some benzo symptoms. Mostly it's cognitive stuff. A lot of it right now, what's going on is the memory, the forgetfulness, the not remembering yesterday. I am getting some anxiety, but I feel like it's anxiety that I've had before. And there really is a reason behind the anxiety that I have. So I feel like it's more, what's the word? Like, I guess it, it makes more sense. Like, I'm not just getting panic for no reason. Um, like, when I went to my son's school today, that's something I've always struggled with. Hold on, y'all. I got one thing that I need to take care of real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm actually just making some lunch. I came in, um, you know, just a little while ago before I hit record and came home from the meeting. But yeah, so I'm 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 starting to you know to really tell myself that the anxiety anxiety is normal. So I think this is the thing. I think 
a lot of people freak out because anxiety they're being told isn't normal. You know, you're not normal. Something's wrong with you. You need to be put on medication. When to be real, anxiety is a part of life. Like if it's destroying your life, don't get me wrong, then it's an issue. But I think when I learned how to deal, mainly this, when I learned what anxiety was, how to cope with it, the coping does work. I've seen it. I've felt it. I, I've witnessed it. That it can be, it can be handled. It can be handled over medication now. Um, so like I said, today, yes, I had anxiety, but I had to remind myself the anxiety I was having was normal. I was going to my son's school. It's his first year of school. He's delayed in many areas due to having cancer. Um, he had a brain tumor on his brain. He's gone through 65 treatments of chemo. I remind myself, and I actually broke down and cried today in front of strangers, people I didn't even know, like five people that I did not even know. But you know what? I sat there and thought to myself, that's about being human. Like, this is what makes us human is by feeling. And I feel like since I've taken benzos and I've destroyed every feeling that I've ever been able to feel and I don't have those feelings anymore, at least I do, but they're not as long as I want them to be present, I sedated everything that I ever was. So I never really controlled my anxiety. I never really dealt with my anxiety. I never really dealt with any of the issues that causes my anxiety. So the whole time, the whole three years, I blanketed all my issues. Where did I really help myself? I didn't. So I, I'm really starting to learn, don't allow anxiety to control you, but know why you have it. Think about why you're having it. What is provoking it? Is it going to a place you're not comfortable? Is it being around people that you don't like? Is it because you're a homebody? You're not used to putting yourself around, surround yourself with people, whatever it may be. But I'm learning, taking Ativan didn't solve my issues of anxiety. It didn't solve any problems before. It just sedated them. They were always there. But in my brain, my brain didn't notice they were there. They were just blanketed. Again, like I've always been repetitive with this. Going back to a bad tooth, the same thing. When you take medicines, your tooth is still aching, but your mind doesn't know it's aching because you've, you've, you've done the pain management part of it. But that tooth is still bad. It still needs to come out. And no matter how much ibuprofen or hydrocodone you pop, that tooth, it's not going to solve that that tooth is bad and it needs to be addressed. The same thing can be said for anxiety. Like, honestly, the same thing can be said. So I almost feel like doctors are looking at us like, you know, we're horrible people and that we're not normal and that anxiety, you know, most people don't live with anxiety. What they don't tell you is we all have a form of something that we're afraid of, a, a trauma, a life event, um, a fear, a phobia, something. But adding medication to my issue, and I'm only speaking for me, never solved my issues. It just made me feel like I was on top of the world and I didn't have anxiety. But little did I know, the pill created more drama than it was worth, more symptoms than it was worth, and didn't really help me, to be honest. Because look where I am now without benzo. I'm dealing with benzo side effects that, that I had to deal with to be on the pill just to get rid of the anxiety. And now the anxiety is back anyhow. So it didn't help me. Now I'm trying to help myself. And I really am a true believer that we need to head on, deal with the issues that we went on these benzos for and find out why. What can we do to make it better? And I'm not kidding you, you guys. I have overcome my own anxiety on my own. Had I know about benzos, I would have never have wasted the four years of my life that I took away from my kids, my family, my world who I am, I'm totally not the same person. I'm not able to receive love when my kids hug me. I know I love them, but I don't feel it back. I don't feel sometimes when I say things, I have to question myself, did I do that out of care? Did I do it from the bottom of my heart? Because I don't feel where it's coming from. The scariest thing in the world is being a shell of someone that doesn't feel anything. And what some people don't understand is the drugs you're on, that may not be you. That may be the drugs you're on contributing to how you're feeling. 
because I never felt this way before Benzo. I can tell you that never, never in my life did I feel like an empty shell. Never in my life did I not have feelings. Never in my life did I feel like you know, when I hug my husband or hug my kids that 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 feeling isn't there. Just the other day, just watching a thriller movie with my daughter, the hair on my arm stood up. That feeling was amazing coming back because I hadn't had it in so long, but it didn't stay long enough. And I'm praying the longer I get off these pills, the longer I've been off these pills, the more I'm going to feel human again. Hang on, guys. One more break. Sorry. Sorry about that, y'all. I don't want to burn down the house. So yeah, so I mean, just, you know, getting into all this, like I said, I mean, it, I would never have been that person. You know, I was a person, I might have been depressed. I might have been angry at times, but I had feelings. I really, really, really had feelings. Like I cried, I was angry. I knew what it felt like to feel disappointed. I know what it felt like to be hard on myself. One second, guys. Yep, that's just a, those those lovely calls that you get where they're like, you're like, hey, and they're like, hi. And then you're thinking there's somebody on the other end and they're like, hi, my name's Sarah. I want to call you about Medicaid. And it's like, oh my gosh. So please ignore the ringing in the background. But yeah, like I said, I I had feelings, you know, I, I had those feelings. I knew what they were, although they didn't feel good all the time. You give somebody, you know, benzodiazepines and you've totally numbed every feeling that they've ever had. And people wonder why they're like, the, the most feelings that they do feel on them is like rage and anger. And I think a lot of that is because we can't feel anything else. So it's like, it's, it's, it's all or nothing. So it's either you're super angry or you're super numb. Not like angry, numb, upset, disappointment, emotional just all those feelings aren't there anymore. So like I felt a lot of anger for no reason, like aggression, but I, I can't tell you why. You know what I'm saying? Where before, at least before I went on benzos, I could tell you why I was upset or angry. Um, you know, in benzos, now I'm learning like I just, I don't have those feelings and it is hurt. It is hard and hurtful because I'm in a world where I have kids. I'm in a world where I want to feel. And you know, it's like I'm either angry, but now I'm to the point where I'm just super sad. I, or I don't want to say super sad. I'm super sad. I know I'm sad because I don't feel. And, and like I said, I will get little bouts of like, today I cried at my son's meeting, as I was telling you guys. But it's like it, it shut off so fast that I really couldn't feel and deal with that I'm still sad about my son's cancer. Does that make sense? So like, I'm just, I feel like it's coming and going so quick that I'm unable to actually feel and deal with it and really feel like what it feels like. So I, I know it's all over the place, but it, it's just, again, that's kind of what I wanted this video to focus on today is feelings. Like I don't feel like I have a whole lot of them still. And it's really, you know, heartbreaking to be a human being and feel like an empty shell. And like I said, I just, you know, I hope as, you know, 90 days goes into 120 days and 120 days, you know, goes into gosh, my math is horrible, three years that I get these feelings back. And I do hear from people that they do ultimately come back. So that gives me hope. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, every day just waking up and feeling like a robot and doing what I need to do just to get it done. And I think a lot of it now, too, is I'm not distracting as much because I'm not having symptoms as much anymore to where I don't need to distract and focus like solely on surviving through the day. So now it's I sit here in the quiet with my thoughts and no emotion. And I kind of mourn who I used to be. So, you know, and again, sorry guys, this video is kind of awkward and it's all over the place. Um, you know, I figured I was up, I was dressed, you know, I would jump on here, but again, it's 90 days. A lot of things have left me. Um, a lot of things are kind of still with me, but mostly it's cognitive. Um, you know, I do run my support group. If y'all need somewhere to feel like you belong, that's a super important, you know, um, 
issue with going through Benzo, join Facebook forward slash the Benzo house. Um, but I think it's like support groups. I'll leave a link somewhere here. Um, but that's another thing. Don't be alone. Don't go through this alone by yourself. You know, there are so many avenues of areas where people are there for you. Um, I've been a part of support groups. You guys know this for over a year. Um, you know, and for me, they saved my life. So get yourself in a good support group, even if it's not mine. There's great ones out there. I'll leave some links down below. You know, that's the biggest portion is going through this and like I said, I'm actually going to focus on, you know, some more videos um, by the end of this week. This was just kind of an update, a surgery update and a feelings update and where I'm at in my journey. Um, but like I said, get into a good support group. It They've really saved a lot of people that I know. And I'm here today because of you guys. And I cannot thank you enough for watching my videos, thumbsing them up, sharing them with family, sharing them with people who don't believe you. Share them with your doctor. Share them with the world. We need more awareness of benzodiazepines. They are a dangerous, dangerous drug. And they should not be given only in emergency circumstances, and we need to keep sharing. The other thing I wanted to say real quickly, Lisa Lang is doing a documentary about benzodiazepines on October 6th. Please tune in. I believe it's on CNN, and I'll leave all the information in the down bar. Thank you guys again for watching, and I will be making another video in the next week. Bye.